Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'll give you some tips I wish I knew before I first fired up Manor Lords for the first time. Full review of the game will come soon, this week I hope, after I beat it. These are things I learned pretty early into the game but I think you will find at least a few you didn't think of even if you played the game for a bit. I don't even watch tips and tricks videos for anything as I usually know what I want to learn about something and I search for that thing specifically but I notice people for some reason like this, so yeah. Well. I hope I can give you some value by the end of this video. If I do, at any point feel free to drop a click or two down below. Without further ado, let's go to number 1. In the beginning, you don't go head to head with armies that have two groups of melee units. If you have one spear infantry for example and one with archers, because your melee inf infantry will crumble at some point and after that your archers stand no chance. It's a completely different story if you build your manor by that point and use your own retinue too. This one is a bit counterintuitive because you'd first think your people are starving because the marketplace is too far. But no, most likely it's a matter of food availability. By the time they reach the marketplace the people who live closer stuff their face in all that food that's being brought up. So the solution is not creating more market space but increasing the number of people who transport that food. If you have the stockpiles that is. Number 3. If a building like the soap pit for example gets filled up completely with planks, just assign the permanent oxen to it if you can spare one. This happens when you have all kinds of things building at once. Your oxen doesn't have the chance of emptying the planks out of your building storage because yeah, you know, they are helping on other buildings or I don't know, they have other tasks. Assigning a permanent animal to your building alleviates that completely. As the game progresses, you'll find out you need to do that more and more. Number 4. Don't spend all the starting money upgrading houses with goat or chicken sheds or veggie gardens. Keep 20 for a second oxen. I found out this is the best thing you can invest your starting money in. Once a couple of families start coming in. I'm telling you that because it will take a while until you start getting income for trading or claiming bandit camps. Don't forget to upgrade your existing hitching post to a stable or just build another one so your new animal stays in your village and doesn't run off. Number 5. This one is about backyard extensions. You don't want too many of those too fast, especially the ones that take away those families from the pool of generic people that are used to work in various buildings around the town and the militia of course. At the beginning of the game increasing your workforce and militia is better than anything those people could craft for you at that point in time. And let's face it, you, you need good resource chains to be able to craft clothes, weapons, hell, even bread and ale is too much at the beginning. At some point, sure, you kinda need to do it because you need boots, war bows and ale and other things. I had to scrap an entire run because I, <laughs> I went overboard with those shops too early. Number 6. Once you do them though, now you can go to the general tab and focus the production on a specific item you want. The default selected item might not be exactly, you know, the one you want to build or you have materials for. Number 7. If you are the type of person who wants to have a specific start, like I did for a run, you can just pause the game and save your map. Basically, it's like you're saving your seed, you know. So you can start it again if you mess something up down the line. I did this specifically as I wanted to start with fertile land so I could start farming faster than usual. And the game apparently starts you mostly with, with not so fertile soil for, for some reason. And while we are at this, I wouldn't do farming in the starting village because it's a lengthy task and you need a lot of men and animal power to do it properly. By the time you need ale to keep your people happy you could try to experiment with a few small fields if you don't want or don't have the money to import it. But I'd just import it to be honest. Number 9. Don't summon an army if you don't have to. I mean, a militia consists of able-bodied freemen who cook your food, work the fields and build stuff around the settlement. The economy slows down tremendously while all men are away, for obvious reasons. So don't be too eager to send the militia to a bandit camp as fast as it was set up, especially if the other lords haven't already sent their armies. 
Nothing better than having your opponent summon the armies, having them <laughs> halfway across the map and then and only then you quickly beat them to the bandit camp and get their stuff before they have a chance to do it. Number 10. Deal with the bandit camps with your own retinue if possible, as those guys are not taken from the pool of men from your town, so your economy will not slow down at all while you use them. They are very slow armored warriors but there is no rush, unless your enemies have the same idea of course. In that case it becomes a race. Number 11. If you click a marketplace zone you can see a info plate and if you hover over fuel, food and clothing you can see the market supply and demand overlays over the, your homes as well as how many free stall locations you have left. Number 12. You don't need to establish trade routes for most goods. That means you will not have for foreign traders come and buy and sell you those goods. And that's it. Your own families assigned to the trading post will do it for you. Basically the flow of goods will be a bit slower without an established trade route. That depends on the number of families assigned to your trading post, number of horses you have and of course the number of types of goods you trade at that moment in time. If you have a high number of goods traded you might be better off just getting a trade route and be sure the goods arrive periodically. 13. If your villagers who are supposed to work in a certain building uh, have backyard extensions at their house, they might... <laughs> I don't know, plow the garden instead of hunting for example. So you can just assign other families on the hunting camp, no problem. Always check to see if things run smoothly in your village. If something is not working there might be an easy fix like this one. Number 14. When we expand to a new territory don't do it while it rains. <laughs> because all your food gets soaked and the villagers hate it. And while we are at this, do it in the spring obviously, so you have enough time to get a few settlers in and get the basic resources flowing by winter. Number 15. You can exchange goods between regions with pack stations. Those come with two stable spaces and to work you need to pick a barter partner and select the goods you want to send and receive. Barter value determines how many of the goods you get for one unit of the good you send. Or well, this is how I think it works. Bonus tips now. At any point if you want to see things without the UI, take a cool screenshot or a cinematic shot, press Ctrl plus C. If you press tab you can see at a glance what's the status of your buildings. Generally green means the respective building is fully used while red means it has no workers. Useful when you need to shift people around like any good lord would do. And this last one uh, bonus tip is, is to help you make things look prettier. Try to stay away from the grid as much as you can and put some effort into your roads uh, as it looks way cooler if you round them like actual humans worked on them, you know. We usually take the shortest path to our destination and when you design a street you want to make it and you want to make it look organic, play with roads, plan ahead and make dead ends and all that. Because when, especially when you upgrade the buildings, uh, it will look cooler, trust me. I'll release uh, the review for this game soon, stay tuned for that one. TLDR, the game is a blast. Thank you for watching and until next time, stay safe and see ya.